Hey everybody, today I'm continuing my evaluation and comparison between the new Nikon Z8 and its big brother, the Nikon Z9. Specifically, we're talking about buffer rates and how quickly they fill up their buffers. Will the Z9, which is the flagship, still dominate the newer, smaller Z8? Or will it be a draw? I guess we're gonna find out. Let's get going. All right, my last video, I was doing a comparison between the, the Z8 and the Z9. I was talking about form factor, buttons, menus, autofocus speed, all those types of things that you'd probably wanna talk about. One other thing I did talk about also was how quickly the buffer seemed to fill up. Now at the time when I was using it for a sporting event, I noticed that the buffer filled up very, very quickly and it was slow to clear the buffer. And I, that really shocked me. I thought it was, you know, a baby Z9. So I did a small test and I included it in the last video. However, I didn't do a good job in that video describing the parameters that I use. And I probably, you know, left some people with uh, different impressions about the performance of the Z8. And you, boy, you guys really let me know about it. Oh, okay, okay, that's enough. I, know. I got it, I got it. So the cards I'm gonna use this time is an Angel Bird AV Pro SE. This is a 512 gigabyte CF Express card. I'm also gonna use a Lexar Professional 2000X card. And the card I used in the last test had a write speed. It was only a third of this one. So obviously that had something to do with the results I had there. But anyway, let's do a head-to-head -head test between the Z8 and the Z9 and see how they do when it comes to buffers. So in this first test, I've got the Z9 up on the left, Z8 on the right. First column, Z9 with two CF Express cards in it. Second column, one CF Express card, nothing else in the second slot. Next column, we have the Z8 CF Express that I just described in one slot and that SD card in the second slot. Finally, we have the Z8 with just the CF Express card, no SD card at all. All right, the first test is the RAW. LC stands for lossless compressed. First test, we have the Z9, two CF Express cards. So RAW is going into both cards. One is acting as a backup. And let's see how it did before it hit the buffer. All right, so it hit 47 frames before it hit the buffer. Now let's go two columns over to the Z8, CF Express plus the SD card. And how did it do before it hit the buffer? Well, it did 33, so not quite as good as the Z9. And that's to be expected because it has the SD card. Next up, we're gonna talk, we're gonna look at the Z9, one CF Express card. So one of them's been pulled, it's not in the second slot. So RAW is going into one Express card, no backup at all. Got 125 before it hit the buffer. Now, what did the Z8 do? Let's see. Wow. 290, That this kind of blows me away. I was shocked. I thought it was gonna get basically the exact same results and it's, you know, double. In fact, it's more than double. It's, I'm just amazed and I can't explain it and uh, I would love to hear somebody from Nikon explain it to me because I can't explain it. All right, so let's move on. Next test, raw, lossless compressed with JPEG. So in this first one, the Z9, two of CF Express cards, one is taking the raw loss express. The second one is getting the JPEG fine. Hit 61 frames before it hit the buffer. Okay, so let's go over two more columns. Z8, CF Express, SD card, same thing, raw plus JPEG. Did 41. So I see a pattern here with two cards, even a good SD card, and that was not a cheap card. It's not doing as well as the Z9. Well, let's keep pressing on. Z9, one CF Express card. 57 frames, okay, all right. So both raw JPEG into one card, 57 frames. Let's see what the Z8 did, 75. So once again, it is beating the Z9, which again, I, I'm surprised, I'm shocked, but there it is. I, and I ran these tests a couple times just to make sure and I kept getting almost the same results every time. So there you have it. All right, so let's go to the next one. This one is HE star. That means the high efficiency star, the new file that is in the Z8s and the Z9s. It's a raw file. It is not as large as the lossless compressed. It's about a third smaller. So it's, you know, for those of us who are worried about space and more space on our cars, more space on our hard drives, this uh, comes in very handy. With that, smaller size raw file, Z9, two CF Express cards. It got 100 frames before it hit the buffer. 
All right, pretty darn good. Makes me want to shoot HE Star even more. So now let's look at the Z8 with the CF Express card plus the SD. Got 51 frames before it hit the buffer. Okay, let's now let's go to the Z9, one CF Express card. It went indefinite. It just kept going, 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 going. I never hit a buffer. Eventually, I just gave up and I stopped. Z8, how did it do? Same thing, went indefinite, never really hit the buffer. So that's great. I mean, it looks like shooting with that high efficiency star is really the way to go in most cases. Okay, let's carry this forward. High efficiency star plus JPEG, Z9, two CF Express cards, 124 frames. Much better than the, the lossless compressed with JPEG. Now let's look at the Z8, CF Express plus that SD card, got 56. Again, this pattern continues. Now let's look at the Z9, one CF Express card, 115, not quite as well. Again, very similar to what we've seen before. And finally, the Z8 with just one Express card. And it went indefinite. Again, it's beaten the Z9 when it just has one CF Express card. If you pull the SD card out, the Z8's a monster. It kind of blows me away. All right, finally, the easiest one for both of them probably is JPEG Fine only. So let's talk Z9 to CF Express. So it's being used as a backup. It went indefinite. Okay, great. Now it's the Z8 with the CF Express and SD card. Stopped at 162. So again, this pattern continues. The SD card is really holding up the Z8 in many cases. Z9 with the one CF Express card went indefinite. Z8 indefinite. So all in all, some just a little additional testing. I've determined that the Z8 is a monster when it comes to the buffer. And it focuses great. It's got the same basic menu system as the Z9. It performs most of the same functions as the Z9. There's some, you know, some ergonomical differences between them, but I'm not, I, you know, bang for your buck. This is a great camera, especially for sports. All right. I'll see you next time.